Hello and welcome to Hug in the Snuck, where today I am joined by pillar explorer Mark Wood. Hi Mark. Hello. Um, you may have noticed this is called Hug in the Snuck, so the first thing that we have to do is have a hug, is that okay? Yes, that's fine. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> everybody, everybody does it. Everybody does okay, it. Okay, good stuff. Excellent. I'm glad you're a woman and not a big bearded man. <laughs> Um, so this is quite um, a special hug in the snug for us. Um, we've had some lots of sustainability experts in today, but we have never had a hug in the snug with a polar explorer. So um, would you like to start by telling us a bit about what it is you do and what you're up to at the moment? Sure. Well, um, I'm a full-time, if you like, explorer, adventurer, whatever you like to sort of title it as. But I work a lot in the Himalayas, Alaska, mainly coal regions like um, Antarctica and the Arctic. Uh, I run expeditions and um, I'm halfway through an expedition, would you believe? Um, so I just completed the South Pole and I'm heading up to the north and that's what I believe that we, we're here to discuss. Yeah, that's right. And um, I heard that you had a little bit of a, a change of plans with regard to the, the north side of your expedition. Yeah, um, you know, as I say, the South Pole has, has now been completed and uh, very successful on time, everything gone to plan. Um, but uh, expeditions are never, you can never predict what's going to happen on an expedition. That's why expeditions are so exciting. Um, and I went up to um, the Canadian High Arctic and did some training there. Um, and I also had a chance to speak to a lot of people who are in the know about the flow of the ice and. Um, the safety on ice at the moment, the predictability of me sort of actually getting um, getting out and doing the expedition. Um, and I weighed it all up and um, decided that the, the best way to do uh, best way to do the expedition is rather than work against Mother Nature is to work with Mother Nature. So I'll be um, heading into the the most remote part of the, the planet the most dangerous part of the planet, I'd say, which is the North Pole itself. So I'll be flown into the North Pole on the Arctic Ocean. The uh, helicopter will take off and go away, and I'll be left there in this remote area to then make my way back to the Canadian coastline. Um, so in terms of a change in thought, it's the same expedition but in reverse. But the flow of the, uh, the drift of the ocean goes from north, if you like, heading back to the coastline, so I'll be working with Mother Nature in that respect. So, um, you talk about working with Mother Nature, but something tells me it's not its not going to be a walk in the park. No, it, well, this is, you know, as I say, the most dangerous expedition you can do. It's uh, it, it marks 10 out of 10 <laughs> about all the expeditions you do on the planet. Um, it scares me, it excites me, and it's why I do expeditions. It's the, the hardest, the toughest, most expedition I'll ever attempt, and I'm very worried at the moment. Um, but I'll be a fool to go out there um, without thinking about my own safety and, and the chances of actually making it. Because it's not just me doing an expedition, there's loads of projects that surround it. Um, and I want to sort of be on ice for as long as possible to sort of maintain the strength of those projects. Um, and also, I mean, there's dangers all the way through of open water, uh, very thin ice, uh, cold, um, loneliness, um, polar bears as well, well, that's quite low on the list. Um, so there's a lot more sort of obstacles and that, okay. more than the South Pole. And you, you mentioned the fragility of the ice being part of the reason why you made this decision to, to reverse the expedition. Do you think that the, the kind of changing the way that the planet is changing, particularly at the poles, is is going to start having an impact on on expeditions in the future and, and on what what explorers are able to achieve. Oh, massively, massively. I mean, um, you know, what happens in these these uh, regions affects everybody around the planet. It's only just like the polar regions and mountains and oceans are so massive and you know, beautiful to look at, that you focus climate change on these regions, but what happens in the, po in the, in the poles reflects, you know, inner city mm -hmm. life in London and any city around the world. Um, and is that part of your motivation for, for doing this, to sort of yeah, well, help people understand that? Yeah, it's more of a message, if you like, because I'm not a scientist, I'm not a climate change expert, I surround myself with, with experts in these fields, I'm purely an explorer. Uh, an ordinary person, I regard myself as a very ordinary person, travelling across this extraordinary land who can communicate how he is, how he's feeling at that moment in time. 
And you know, um, the prob the problem is seasonal change. You have um, you know farmers are affected by seasons. The crops are affected by seasons. It's the same with the oceans. It's the same with the way people live their life in the in the polar regions. Um, and to cross the Arctic Ocean now, um, it, it's doable, so I wouldn't attempt it, but it's extremely hard, extremely hard. Um, in the days of Scott Shackleton and all the great sort of explorers then, um, it was, it, I, the ice was very tough, but it, it was sort of hard packed ice so they could cross it. Now the ice is sort of, it's not as much packed, it's flatter, so it's easier to cross, but there's a lot more open water. So, um, and that's the difficulty, getting across these open leads. Um, two last questions for you. One, how do you find the mental strength to carry on at, at when, when an expedition gets really tough? Okay, that's one of the first questions. <laughs> okay, I'm waiting for the second question. That's going to be a good one. Um, the mental strength for it. Well, you know, it's, one, this expedition, you've got to do it with experience. Uh, inside you first of all, and as I say, this is probably like the 14th polar, 27th major expedition that I've done. So the experience is there, I know when it's going to be tough, I know when it's going to be freezing cold, I know when I can sort of break my way through it if you like. Um, but um, it, you've got to take every second as it comes, every, every, foot, every, every step as it comes, you know, you can't it will get better, things will get better. On this last expedition, day six, I was in completely in bits and ready to throw the, the towel in. But, you know, it was just the, the strength to just keep going, keep progressing, see how it goes, and then you get through it. And you can sort of mirror that with normal life anyway. You know, mm -hmm. people find it tough sometimes, but it does get easier. And you do cope and you do adjust. And that's how, it, how you deal with long-range expeditions. And my final question, and I think this is probably something that, that everyone's watching is, is going to want to know. Um, what do you do if you come across a polar bear? Um, I've seen at different times 18 polar bears close up. Um, and you do count them you know, on many different expeditions. The polar bear is his domain. So it brings a, a completely new aspect to the expedition itself. And it's beautiful to see. But they are killers. Um, but generally they haven't seen human beings before um, so they're just inquisitive like any animal so they they sniff the air they look to see these beautiful colors of the you know they haven't seen against the white background and they, they're just inquisitive so you've got to take your photographs at distance and then you've got to sort of scare the bear away by being obnoxious really you know the best effective way people think it'd be guns or something like that but it's not it's it's pans so you can bang pans together shout out really loud and the bears kind of gets a bit grumpy um, you can set off flares and things like that we carry a gun with us or a solo I'll carry a gun with me and if you fire around basically the base of the, the bear where the snow is and it knocks the snow up against the bear and it sort of scares him away um, and as I say, with 18 bears, we've never had to put one down, and it will be horrible. It comes the day that I have to do that, but you need protection in such a, an intense environment. And just to finish the question off for you, um, the other day I was writing my kit list, and uh, on the kit list was a, um, a, sh a shotgun and a passport, and you know you're on an extreme expedition when you have to take those two <laughs> items. <laughs> the two things. <laughs> Okay, great. Thank you very much, Mark. Um, I know a lot of people have been following your progress so far and um, your achievement getting to the South Pole, and we're going to be sharing all of your news and updates with the media and everybody else um, who's following you through the rest of the expedition, so good luck. Okay, thank you.